Unity stock has plummeted and I've lost money. As my last resort to save the company and satisfy the investors, I must use the software to the utmost and create something groundbreaking. And so, I've created Unity in Unity. I must learn about money, so I've put on four different finance podcasts and got into work. I've added the inspector and the top bar. Top bars have options and by using layout groups I've added four of them, each one letting you spawn a different shape. I spawned a square. It doesn't seem very useful. I need a way to modify objects. Unity has these things called gizmos such as position, rotation and scale. And so I've added three buttons and got into work. Now we can move, rotate and scale, but I've noticed that it is very annoying to edit multiple things at once. And literally, everything lets you select multiple objects and treat them as one. My Unity also needed that mechanic. So, when dragging a mouse, it draws a rectangle and checks what is inside it. I could try to iterate over all objects and move them one by one, but I've just abused Unity's hierarchy system and it just adds selected objects to a temporary parent and when you click on any of its children you can edit them individually. If this is confusing, it is because I haven't explained at all, giving you my classic tutorial experience. I've hit the gym. With the newly gained knowledge I started working on the inspector. It was my first time working with the UI that is more complex than a pause button, so I headed into Unity Docs. <laughs> I ain't reading all that. And now I have a working prototype of the inspector. You can click on the object, read its data and modify it. And that's kinda all you can do. The next thing I've added were colors. For some reason Unity stores colors as numbers from 0 to 1 so I multiplied them by 255 for clarity. So rigid body. I could try to code my own physics but I've already done it in my old game Gravassist. And I don't want to experience it again. So let me just... Colliders, yeah, they are fucked up. Square falls, so it is alright. To spice things up, I've added a third button, concatenate. It uses the functionality of creating a parent when selecting multiple objects, but now I don't kill it after it isn't useful. Objects linked together share position, can have components as a whole, or by double clicking you can change their individual parts. You can also unlink them by clicking concatenate once more. Then I lost half a day of work. I forgot to save. So I could it an editor script that does it each time I click play. Fortunately the scene was the only thing that I hadn't saved so it wasn't much of a hassle. With that finished I added some quality of life upgrades like shortcuts, color wheel and global settings. And I believe the editor is finished for now. The next step involves enabling users to customize objects with their own behaviors. Imagine something akin to Unity's shared graph or Resolve Fusion page. If you touched grass recently and don't know what am I talking about, picture this. You start with an entry node. This node can be linked to a condition, like pressing a key. If the condition is met, it triggers an action, such as moving the character. Those scripts will be now queued. Within this queue, each script will be executed. Following that, the system will loop through all the outputs and place them back into the queue. With that idea in mind, I began the tiresome process of creating my own scripting system. This is an example of a node. For now it has no effect, but it demonstrates the concept. The triangle receives a signal. Some operation is being executed, and if the output is true, the square pushes it further.
After repeatedly trying and failing, I finally stumbled upon the right way to implement a quite optimal system using abstract classes. To check if everything works, I've added three extra nodes, debug, operation and value. The latter is basically a variable. It uses a new input type that works in a reversed order. When a node is being executed, it loops through all of its inputs to find value types and calls the getValue method inside them. And, to my surprise, everything was fine! Off camera I've added a few more nodes. For example, you can now directly access the character using transform and rigid body or read inputs using keyboard input. Now please have a look at the simple demo of me creating a character that can be moved around. For now, thank you so much for watching, leave your ideas in the comments below, like and subscribe because I need money for my dream car. See you soon.